CDL, Brady and Cricket went to the 30-hour water course, which allows them to take their grade one water treatment tests three months earlier than what the normal time frame is. Um, Brady is actually signed up. Uh, we're just waiting on the DNR to tell him when he's eligible to take his grade one. It should be about the November time frame. Um, and then we'll get Cricket signed up also. Two new panels were installed on the lift station. Uh, we have one really left all the beacons are working except for uh we have two of them that aren't working but it's above what our expertise our knowledge is to get them so when jason rosehauer comes to change out the check valves on the crescent park lift station he's the professional guy on those so he'll get those two working um change some lights out of the campground change out non-working meters installed new speed bumps at the campground I uh, met with the board company to figure out when he would be able to start to bore under 175 for the community center, replaced a three-phase transformer, dug in line and pulled wire. Uh, we got our state permit from the boring or from the state to bore under 175. They should be boring on Wednesday. Worked on bids for the storm drain, Denison Beach. The brush pile was pushed up, locates, uh, secured a sectionalizer, built a transformer. Uh, build the resters, moved the bridge, the new bridge down to the campground, changed out some more non-working meters. I think we're down to about 12 left. Moved uh, picnic tables and mowed. Met with the DNR about a complaint that we had um, over chlorine issues and 
the DNR came and did their things and we're good to go. Changed out some breakers uh, at the campground. Worked on the uh, three phase going over to the community center today. Got the trencher out there so they can start trenching tomorrow. Um, just moving piles of dirt. Uh, somebody was kind enough, kind enough to give us a whole bunch of piles of dirt uh, for a basement that's getting dug. So we'll take the free dirt when we can. Um, the backhoe broke down today. It should be back up and fixed tomorrow. Um, hopefully if Caterpillar can get us the part and we're just staying busy and working and trying to plan ahead. Any questions? I do have one question. What is our plan with all the logs down at the room site? So most of those logs, residents have been coming to get them and split them or cut them and split them. We haven't touched a one of them. I know uh, Jacobson is one individual that comes and takes them. I know Denny's came and take, uh, taken some of them and they split them and use them for firewood. We just kind of pile them up and let them do what they want. Quite a few is what I'm getting at though. There's going to be more when we start getting some of the trees cut down. I don't want but we have now. to get them down, so store them and let people take it. I mean, I mean, some. Of, I mean, I suppose some of them we could burn, but it, I think those are way almost way too big to burn, aren't they? Some those other ones that are set off to the side. Some. So. There's a bunch of stumps, you know, with the dirt in it, which isn't going to burn very good. Yep. I don't know if we can get some sort of machine and take them back farther into the trees and to the west. Yeah. Because do we have a lane going down there for fire issues? We used to. It, we we haven't touched it. So if it was there before, it's still there. It's just probably uh, it's, full it's, of weeds. It's not <laughs> there. That Schrader guy was always going to come and redo that. He never did, as far as I know, right? Does that sound right? Yep, he's never been back. Never been. And not the Schrader says the right last name. Mm -hmm. Yeah, lives to the south there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was going to get a. He was. He had. He was going to bring his dozer over and redo yeah. that lane. He never has. And, but with us changing the process, we haven't had to worry we about the issue. Yeah, 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 which has worked out well. Yeah. The biggest thing we might have an issue with is trying to figure out something with all of those leaves because I don't really want them pushed over to the open side because that's where we're running into a lot of those burning problems down on, down on the hill. So. Still working on a solution for that. To the west. Yeah, to the west. Okay, city administrative report. Um, my biggest thing is um, met had the community center board um, their first meeting on Thursday. Then I think was it? <laughs> it's like last week's blur. Um, on Thursday, and uh, so got some of the colors decided on the interior. Um, kind of went through what our focus is going to be. Um, I think we're, we're meeting again this week. And probably on kind of on a weekly basis till we kind of get things, um, you know, get things going and construction gets finished and we get it working. So yeah, um, that was probably that's my big thing. But other administrative stuff. On that note, I uh, asked Jim if he's accepted to serve as the liaison to the board of the council. Police report. So um, it's been a long kind of month. Um, we repainted the PD, um, trying to make it look more professional. Um, got a decal for the wall, hung up some professional pictures. Um, removed some spray paint from the window. Uh -huh. The flyer new desk for each officer, so um, now everybody has their own desk. We received a new evidence printer from Sac County E911 systems and a barcode scanner. So now everything's going to be a little bit more organized. Uh, me and Christian have been going through evidence. I have a meeting with uh, East SAC, um, basically the superintendent over there, uh, John Thompson, who's the SAC City Chief of Police, and Sergeant Meyer to go over emergency operations uh, with them. I met with our VAPCO, it was uh, Jason, Jim Garls, Bill Leonard, and I, um, we went over their emergency operation plan. Um, I received a quote from Twisted Graphics in SAC City to get off. Uh, all the cars decal. Um, I finished the background check of Reed and also the hiring paperwork. I met with Chris Rodman over in Wall Lake and went over the updated code book. Um, 
basically I've been going through SOPs, trying to make them a little bit better. Um, and then also putting them into our CAD system so we can look them up. Uh, we did alert training over at the SO. Um, that's active shooter training, that's attack med. Uh, we assisted in the farm festival with parade and traffic control and also just security at night. Um, Christian scheduled annual firearms training, which will be the end of this month. Um, we also worked on ILEA trainings, so our annual trainings that are mandatory. We got the black charger fixed uh, from an accident a while back. Um, I guess a year. Uh, we also ordered new uniforms with a 40% off voucher. Um, so we got them for cheap. So we can look some, uh, somewhat professional. Um, I got a donation from First State Bank for Jimbo. And then also I had a meeting with Teresa and Kay um, with an IT person uh, just to go talk about if we could update our systems because we have to be CGIS compliant. So we just got to figure out um, a good spot for that. And then other than that, we had uh, 185 calls for service since August 1st. So we're still kind of busy, but hopefully it's starting to slow down a little bit. Other than that, that's it. Thank you, George. It's probably the most detailed police report I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Good job. That's a, that's a great. Plus, we get well, you guys. Jason. Yeah, you've been saying hey. Jason. <laughs> I, I got told to. Uh, to work on my thing, so I think that's it. So we've been busy. That's so. good. Yeah. Okay, we have one voting permit. Here that meets all the rules and regs. Yep. We'll make permission. a motion to approve the building permit. Second. Roll we'll call. Frank. Yes. Jensen. Yes. Sankin. Yes. Waltman. Yes. Beckman. Yes. Okay, we have some the historic preservation committee here. Would you like to? Uh, yeah. Um. You know, most of everybody knows here that the Stone Piers, we met last week with jo um, Paul Henry, who's the gentleman who restored the Stone Piers about 25 years ago. And uh, he, he and I went down there today and assessed what needs to be addressed. And the men's club last year did some caulking, which was very helpful. But there are some areas that need to be addressed. And I think I gave you, you all have this estimate for, um, and what, he and I discussed today was that um, we're looking at the West Stone Pier where they have the concerts, and on the south side there is where a lot of the, the damage from winter, it's water. It's water damage. Rocks are a little loose. Um, there's cracks in there. Um, we're going to have, uh, like I said, the cracks are and the holes are bigger that caulking is not the answer. It needs to be mortared. And um, so he and I went through all of that, and um, he and I. We also discussed. We started this last summer, and they couldn't get here when we wanted them to, and that's why we went ahead and did the cocky. And uh, so this year they got here because they have been working in town. And um, he said the cocky in itself was done pretty well. He was really kind of satisfied with that. Uh, like I said, the areas that really need to be addressed are those that are too big for caulking and really need to be mortared with number two grade mortar, whatever, whatever is down there already. And so he's given us his estimate. Um, he said that right now they're in a wall and he could get started on it right away if the city council approves. Uh, he asked for 30% down. And I figured that to be four thousand two hundred and ninety dollars. Um, the HPC does have some capital accounts. Uh, Teresa probably knows where they're at somewhere. Yeah, I don't. I didn't bring yeah. those figures with me. That's yeah. quite right. We can check on those later. Um, we'd like to get started on it right away. This is the stuff that really needs to be addressed right now, and the stone piers <laughs> have really not been addressed for twenty some years. So if you look at his estimate. It comes out to about two thousand dollars a year, which, but then he said the first three years he checked it, it was fine. So the deterioration has happened in probably the last five to ten years. But he said they're on the national register, they're quite unique, and um, it would be a good idea to restore them, keep them restored as much as possible. Um, and I talked to Teresa after the meeting, and we were talking about funds, and um, we were going. She's going to try and find some local grants. 
we're going to go down and see if the National Register has any grants that we can write. I mean, ways to raise money somehow to take care of this bill. I think as far as maintenance goes, if they're willing to come every year in the spring and, and do an assessment, um, we were talking about funds for that, and I, I said to Teresa, I said, it all comes out of the same purse. Uh, we can raise our budget, we can take care of it out of our budget, or it can be something the city takes care of. It doesn't matter to us. But we, you know, it's something that needs to be addressed in the future. But right now, this is, this is what he assessed that needs to be done before the snow flies. And he said they could get on it right away if we get the okay. And I'll leave it up to the city council to decide. Did he give you any figures on what, because uh, what you and I had talked about was like possibly like a yearly maintenance to have it looked at or, you know, yeah, to have the peers looked at. And he really didn't give me a figure on a yearly okay. maintenance, so I, I can't tell you that. Because um, yeah, that was my recommendation is like, you know, before it got to a point of a large repair is having them looked at because they are on the historic register that we put something in the budget every, you know, every year to have them at least analyze so that we can kind of plan for something. Yeah. Well, if you recall, 25 years ago was a $200,000 bill. That's, when they, they put the, that's when they put the pillars in there and they stuff had to put the water. They put the pillars and they had to put some reinforcement in there and underwater, you know, like he said, there were so many rocks missing underwater that as the waves were coming in and washing out underneath the pier, um, that one, the north side of the west pier would have been gone. I mean, the whole pier would have collapsed. So, you know, and that was 25 years ago and it hadn't been touched at all before then. So we do want to, you know, want to keep it up to snuff now. I don't want to have to pay another two hundred thousand dollars to save it. I'll make a motion that this thing we had and just say I have a question before you make that motion. Um, if we go forward and start with this, or does that make us ineligible for grants for the remainder of this? Sometimes, I mean, yeah, sometimes it does if you've already done the work. Um, it makes you ineligible to get grants, but it also depends. Sometimes those grants are, you know, you're going to wait till next year to, in a sense, do the work if the work needs to be done now. I mean, it just... I was just asking a question. Right, Because I know yep. there's a SAC right. County down the fund grant coming up, which these are in SAC County, and historic yeah. thing. Might have a good chance, and I didn't know if there was any other. I didn't want to... That's one of those yeah. sort of things. Don't start. Something to think about too on the on the yeah, estimate that he gave. The if they get it done in less time than what he puts here, it'll be less money. This is if it takes about three weeks, weather permitting. How will that impact the concert coming up? If if they were to be able to start work right away, how will that impact the concert that's coming up on? I didn't even ask him. I forgot all about that. Because that would when make a difference. When he did the pillar. On Crescent Park Drive or Third Street, whatever that, you, it wouldn't affect anything of the concert, in my opinion, okay. because and he was fine. off to the side and he cleaned up every day. Yeah, every he day. Is, he did an outstanding yeah. yeah. job on that pillow. Just, yeah. He's I got two he'd people helping him most of the time. Yeah. So here as well. Yeah. But it's not coming down with the deadline to file was the 27th of September. So we got half the money, they can get the other half the money. We have to apply for that grant, but you can't start. Until after, but there might be some other things that I don't know. Well, we were thinking about the one from like Corn Belt or how about the Renzi Fund, Renzi Grant? That's all Renzi just got. Yeah, but I mean, could, could, could we apply for it like even though the job is done? I don't know. No. Like Probably say, not. That's why, no, that's why I wanted to ask that question. Because usually, grant, the, usually grant funds are granted before a project is completed, but sometimes it's in between. And maybe that's something we can write for further, you know, there's down the road. Yeah, I mean, I mean there's always going to be, be. It could be something that could be done for down the road. Yeah. I mean, we're sitting at the big, and this is what I'll say this isn't necessarily in the budget, but we're at the beginning of the budget year. So it's something that we can probably accommodate for if it, you know, if the work needs to be done, you hate, you hate to have a bigger bill further down the road. Right. And I'm just thinking with our, I know we have some capital funds account, or several, and you know, if we have to draw from those, um, I think the HPC would be willing to do that just to get things rolling. I would say we don't want to do that. Yeah, 
since it's not in the budget, and then maybe the future projects we can be aware of grants and stuff and start looking at if whatever you were keeping that money for the capital. Well, we had one for we had one for the stone pier. We had one for the um, cheap black hawk. We had one for the log cabin. We've got like uh, about four of them, I think, four capital. Our microphone, our microfilming project. Yeah, we do have several capital. So funds. what I'm saying, the capital funds, if we use them for this project, you maybe could look for grants for right. the other projects. Is oh yeah, right. For what I'm right, saying. Right. absolutely. For future on this. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yes. also. Yeah. Because yeah. I agree. Once it starts deteriorating, it's just going to go faster. It's going to go. He said that what hurts it is the snow melt and the water getting in between mm -hmm. the cracks because it just kind of that frost and yeah. Well, yeah, the, the expansion and the, you know. Uh -huh. are, are we pretty well caught up with the cabin? I mean, uh, is there anything major yet left on that? or? I don't think so. I don't. Th I think that's okay, because we went in the other day to look at it, and it was swept out and clean. We're going to use it this weekend for Pioneer Day, so. I mean, the new roof has certainly helped. The, uh -huh. And Chris stabilized the that front porch really right. well before they put the new roof on, so I really think that that should be in fairly good shape. And I think we the back problem might be a been resolved. Oh, with the new rough? Yeah. Okay. okay. So, I will I will make a motion that we go ahead and get this started and we'll find the funds somewhere. Like you said it's a new new year. It, it's something that we have to take care Next of. Next April I might say otherwise, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well thank you, Teresa. <laughs> <laughs> sure. We have a second on that motion. I'll second. Well, three of us seconded it. Three. Well, yeah. It's like, okay, one second, of them. Second, third, fourth. Frank? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Diane? Yes. Lovin? Yes. Beckman? Yes. And the HPC? Yes. HPC thanks you. Thank you. Okay, consideration of the police vehicle graphics. So, you want to talk about this, George? Yeah. Um, so, we got a quote from. Uh, Twisted Graphics, which is based out of Sac City. Um, basically, I think that we need the cars marked. Um, and it's just a matter of time of getting it done. Um, the code total is $3,000 to get all three vehicles decaled. Um, the ones that you see on those pictures, that'll be the Charger and the black truck. Um, for the white car, we we're gonna do, since we, have the car unmarked and it's made to be an unmarked um it would just be white decals over the white car so they'll be noticeable but not as noticeable so if we do decide to do something that's a little undercover we could still kind of be on the cover um but whenever light hits it it's going to show up it's going to say police um other than that i think going local was the smartest idea to get a quote um and yeah also uniformity, I think, getting the black truck. The black truck only has 70,000 miles, so she's got a lot of life to her still. Um, but I think having the cars all look pretty much the same, um, so we look professional would probably be the best bet. So that's why we decided to go with the black truck too. Did you have to talk to a boy? I, we tried to. Um, I, it's not his wheelhouse, really. I mean, oh, vehicle decals aren't really the, yeah. the, the straight stuff like what we did on the uh, on the trailer. Oh, that's that. Yeah. This this curve with the doors and things. I know how well I'm not 100 yeah. sure that that's really on his. Uh, his yeah, so we talked. These guys at Blister are fantastic. That's why I'd say. We talked. Uh, I cross talk that with my business crosses these guys a lot. They're, yeah. they're about as good as they get. Yeah, I talked to Tom. Um, Tom was obviously busy with all the concerts in the summertime, um, but he said that he does a lot of uh, things with, with Derek up there in SAC, so he was actually very fortunate that we kind of got the quote from him too. <laughs> so when we did the two new chargers, does that push the rotation of the pickup back under? Was that our intention? Well, we won't be buying a vehicle this year. Um, yeah potentially maybe putting something in rotation for next year, but I'd have to go and look at the, the schedule, I, but. I thought that's why we got the two mm -hmm. new right. ones. One was a rotation thing, the other one was because of the replacement. And we yeah. could almost probably wait even another year. We could go almost another year of 70,000. I just didn't want to spend a thousand bucks on a picket before we get replaced. Get rid of six Right, yeah. no. 
I would say that we'll probably, if it's not having issues, we'll probably just rotate it for another year. Right. Is this in your budget? Yes, sure. I do have one question. Go ahead, sir. That white charger, are the windows sanded too dark? Uh, they are. The reason for that is for the dog. Because um, right now we don't have a fan back there. So if the sun's beating down on the dog, it's potential life or safety risk for the dog. Okay. So we got the ceramic coating um, just so the dog can be safe. Well, and the reason I think you're probably, I've had some residents ask me how a cop car can have illegally tinted windows when we can't have that. I, I get it. Yeah. We get the question all the time. Um, but again, so when I was in training up in Des Moines, the biggest thing that the sergeant of the morning kept saying, the head trainer, was I would never let you drive that vehicle with that dog back there. He goes, your dog's going to die on you. And having summertime, that was our quickest fix. Instead of us buying a hot and pop system, I was, it's about $5,600 and we install for the electronics. So that was the quickest fix that we could find. And by Iowa code, technically, you don't have tinted windows. Okay. So it's legal for you to have them? Correct. Okay. On a cop car, yes. That's a better answer. Good. 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 Again, if we're going to run traffic or do something a little bit more undercover, it won't be on the back of the, the white car, but I also want the Facebook graphic on there too. So. Cool. Okay, we are going to consider the SRF home tolls out for the water treatment plant. Okay, so. Seven years in the making. Yep. Um, Jason, do you have anything to comment on these? I know that you've fully read through them. Um, and the punch list recommendations? The punch list, all the items have been completed by the subcontractor that we ended up hiring. Um, the financial side of it, that I don't know what they charged. Honestly, didn't really care. I wanted it to get it fixed. Um, I know the one of the concerns has been uh, when does the warranty start? Um, I, I don't necessarily read it in here. I know the one part says the one thing we were talking about it beforehand. I believe because Grumman and Hicks is um, now a defunct corporation or company, I think the warranty does go through the bonding company. At least that's what I've seen in the past. I I'm think pretty, I'm pretty sure that was our understanding. Right, and the, I think I verified that that it would be um, through the bonding company, and then also agree with the 2027 time frame. So, um, the plant's running good. the The issues that we have are just wear and tear, normal use. Um, what you would expect from a plant that's running for four years. I mean, nothing that I would say is any fault of a contractor of any sort at this particular point. We haven't had any issues with any kind of leak, leaks at all? Okay. No, we they, they brought us a truckload of rock where we thought we had a, a potential spot. We put the just a road rock there, drove on it. We haven't had an issue since we've done that and we've gotten a little bit of rain since we've done that. Um, I think it was just a low spot from where everybody kept driving and parking, and um, but everything's holding water, not leaking out. So you're pretty well satisfied that everything's up to great. I think there's a lot of things I'd like differently, but <laughs> I'm satisfied as much as I can be. <laughs> what kind of what, what would you change differently? I would like a building over the influent uh, sampler because half the time during the winter when we go out to grab our samples with the wind blowing and stuff like that, it just freezes that sample. Well, our sampler, our samples are mandated by our permit. So if we get just the right wind, we might miss a sample and then we're going out the next day trying to get another sample Well, it's froze. Sometimes we just can't get a sample and I have to put, we have to put on the report, sampler froze. Well, enough of those, the DNR, 
starts to look a little bit harder um, because of that. I'd like to get a building on that at some point. Just some sort of shed that we can put some sort of heater in to keep the sampler from getting cold enough to freeze. What was the cost on something like that would you estimate? Ten. That's a separate that's a separate yeah. that's, kind of, that's not a that's part of this area. That's like a separate That's good. That's ten yeah. by I mean, that's, so that's something that we, cost. Jason and I, have actually been talking about. I think we can probably get it into the budget. Yeah. But yeah. Are, we, are we getting some money back from the bond company? Or could we yeah, get twenty-five hundred. Yeah, so far we got twenty-five. What twenty? Get two thousand three hundred thirty yeah. dollars. Yeah. Six cents. Start earmarking some of that money. You know, that. Right. Yeah. The other thing that, and this is all personal, and I'm just telling that up front. Um. The UV structure, I wish there was a walls and a, a roof on top of that also, just because you do have elect, uh, electrical that goes down in there. We have sampler that goes down in there. Sometimes that sampler freezes because that wind goes directly down those stairs, and it's, it's kind of cold down there. The sampler itself doesn't freeze. It's the tube that's in the water that freezes. If we had the four walls on it, um, it would prevent a lot of that from happening. That one's going to be a lot more expensive. It's a lot bigger, <laughs> a lot bigger. Um, is that stuff that we can work on over time? Absolutely, it is. Um, as far as the building goes, the building's doing really good. Um, I don't see any issues on that aspect of it. We need to. We're going to spend some more time out there this fall. Um, in the first two cells, they're called aerators that hang, and you see the bubbles coming up. So when they install those, they tied like a clothesline rope to it that you're supposed to use to pull up the aerators to clean them off once a year. Yeah, good luck. Um, it's heavy. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna pull the aerators this uh, fall. We're gonna drag them all to shore, clean them up the way we're supposed to, um, and we're gonna add something different for us to be able to pull them up in a easier fashion. Um, than trying to hang over the side of the boat and one person's pulling on that and the other person's pulling on the red hose and the boat's sitting like this because none of us are small. Um, <laughs> so we, we're just going to little things and some of that, like I said, is personal preference. Um, but we'll get there and uh, Rome's not built in the day. But as far as functionality? Functionality, okay. we're, we're blowing our... Besides chloride, obviously, when you look at our CBOD, our TSS, our E. coli, um, our ammonia nitrogen, we're well below what the permit limits are requiring us. So it's doing its the, job. The system's working. But you're okay with the loan closed out and being done. Uh, I don't. My honest opinion is I don't know how we don't do it based off of the punch list items being completed to the satisfactory of what was agreed upon prior to my arrival. Is it something, I mean, I heard you say, is it something that the council, before we make final acceptance, is it something that the council would like to have a walkthrough out there and and just have their own your own visual on it and have Jason go through it? I mean, we're happy to do that for you all. I'll even pull out the SS Minnow and let you guys go in the pond. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. Us three were talking earlier, prior, um, that we don't know if we'd be looking what we'd be looking at other than you know the pumps and we're, we're relying on you to feed us information and anytime you want to go, I'll explain it to you the best of my ability. Yeah. I've been out there many times, it's okay. Yeah. I make the notion that we close out this loan and move forward. Jason's comfortable. I'm comfortable. I'll second it. Been waiting for a long time to say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Roll call. I wanted you to make the motion. Back with Yes. Thank you. Yes. Jensen. Yes. Frank. Yes. Walden. Yes. Okay, we have another pay application for Sandy. Yep, and this pay application actually is a corrected one from the last time um, on they they had more items come in and they had 
they tried to correct it the last time and it just it didn't hit the council so um, this one is uh, just a, a revision of of that one so it was it what yeah, eighty eight thousand five hundred and seventy nine dollars and eight cents. The motion for that to pay that they should move. Second? I'll second. Roll call. Walton? Yes. Second? Yes. Jensen? Yes. Frank? No. Beckman? Yes. Okay, we need to set the date for public hearing. The proposal to enter the general alteration corporate purpose agreement. So basically, this would be setting um, the date for going into a GO loan um, based on kind of what you guys have done in the past. What I've included in this is, is basically, you know, 1.3 million. It would include the project for the water sewer extension down on Highway 175 if you guys want to move forward. If you don't want to move forward with that project at this time, we can easily take it out and then it'll become whatever, four hundred and fifty thousand or four hundred thousand dollars less. Eight seventy five. Um, the the theory behind the water sewer extension project down there is there isn't and Jason could probably explain it a little bit better. There is not a um, we, we verified there is not a um, water main on the north side of the road that doesn't go from where we came across right there um, to the shortly to the west of the new locker site all the way to Dollar General. They have fed off um, from a service main Dollar General and them. So in that area along 175, we don't have a water main unless, you know, you're, then you're talking a very long service line. Um, so that would be the point is if, you know, future development on one side or the other would probably have a good idea of us having a water main somewhere. Um, the sewer line, same kind of thing. Um, and then what this also does is it starts, you know, it puts that culvert in. It, it's not an absolute solution, but at least it starts a solution. One, one, of, my, one of my concerns about that water sewer extension 175 is if we move forward to try and do that now, there's no way we'll have that done in time for that current building that's going up. So we have to service that with a long service line for right now. Okay. Because if we, if, I guess, hear me out. If we vote to move forward with the, the engineer firm that did a great job and set it out for bids, and we're going to want to complete it yet this fall, this is already the end of August. Right. The price is going to be through the roof to try and get it shut down. And I don't disagree with that. So I think we're going to have to service that for water. And then I also think we need a plot development plan for what they're planning on doing down there so we know how to build it for future. That's my opinion. So the, the 400, this 400 for the water sewer extension for 175, if we leave that, we can, if we take it out, then we got to come up with the money to fund the, the, just a, a line for that other deal. But or, if we leave it in, or are we, we required to use it for water sewer extension 175? Or is it just there that we know that we need, we've got water and sewer issues that we need to do? That we're, that What I'm saying is if we take it out, we're only walking around them. Can't we take another one out at the time? Well, that's, I, I, that's what I'm going to You can. I mean, basically, how how they how they're being worded. It's being worded is yes, we do have money for a particular you know project in a sense, but it can be. You kind of have to have an idea of what you're going to spend it on before you you take out a loan and you're. Which we the know money. that's right. what we're, we know that it's for the water sewer issues that we yeah. have on 175, and if some of that money is used to immediately feed the building that's there. Yes. And we work on, I mean, a plot plan and, and some ideas. Then we've already got some money there. That's and if you want to plan to do the project in the spree, spring, spring, well, whatever it and, is, and, and bid it, the, bid it for the first thing to have yeah. done in the spring, you can certainly do that. That can be. You basically you're bundling your package together for a project that's going to be in the near future. Exactly. Okay, so, yeah. so when we do this, so when we borrow this, seven, one, three, twelve, one point three million, 1. basically, 3 million, mm -hmm. we have to borrow it all at once. 
Well, yeah. Do we, do we pay interest on it once we draft, draft the money, like an operating no. loan? No. Or do we well, pay interest right off the start? You're, you're going to have, as soon as you have it, they'll put it into the package that you'll probably have some interest probably in December for January, because that's usually how they do it every six months. And then you're going to have interest in July. And then you will not start paying on principal until you um, until the next tax season, because then you're going to start collecting property taxes for it. So you will have some cost up front. You will have some interest costs. You'll but your chances on 1.3 million getting a little bit better interest rate versus you know you might get something similar 875, but you're adding a significant amount more. Well, but, you know. And I'm Hearing nothing but interest rates. That's why going down. Now. Right. That's what I was. What, what yeah, all that will affect that. Taking a big nosedive between now and next spring. That's what happens when they're under whatever. So, yeah. And then I guess the other thing is, when we prepare a bond, how much do we pay it in interest rate? This is this bond's probably going to cost us between probably close to ten grand. Okay, so if we had to turn you around, have one. Do, yeah. How much interest is ten grand? You know, another mm -hmm. four hundred thousand, five percent, twenty thousand dollars a year. Mm -hmm. And we don't know what's going to be four hundred thousand. Yeah. yeah, you Unfor don't. Unfortunately, with our past experience since I've been on here, nothing has come in and it okay. has to come I'm not saying yes or no, and I, I definitely want to move forward with that one set by yeah. project, but I'd like to see a plot. A development plot, what's going on down there, so we know, you know, if there's nothing else well, going to happen, we don't know if something's going to go on the north side of the highway right now. I guess my, it's only my opinion, I don't think I want to spend, borrow $400,000 for what it might be. You know, you know. Yeah, the, the, and you could look at if you want to go that route, considering that there's a possible development on Outlaw 20. Um, water, that's almost a water sewer extension for Highway 175 in itself. It can almost be worded as. Yeah, you can. I mean, then you can bundle something else together as well. If what she said, that. if we do something about Highway 25, we'd like to make a bigger project. Yep. Right. Then we'd have to rebond. You know, is that what yep. I'm hearing you right? Yep. Um, it's 6 1. Yep. I don't care. I just want to make sure we talk to you. Yeah, yeah. Well, personally, I'm yeah, always that, I mean, having a little be... slush money. And, and then that 400 for a small interest, for, for a, what do you think the interest rate is going to be to? Oh. oh, I'd probably say you're probably going to be between, right now, probably between 3 and 5 for sure. Really? Mm -hmm. I think so. <laughs> is there a chance to refinance if things change? Oh, yeah, you can always refinance. It sometimes costs you a little bit of money, but you can, you can, re, uh, you can refinance. It depends on how much worth it is to you. Right. You can refinance and you can attach additional money onto it when you you know when you refinance a bond because I've, I've done it before sure. you can you know refinance and then say okay yeah, this is mm -hmm. sometimes it takes a minimum of a year depending on how the bonding documents are put together yeah. you know you got to be able to re, you know to restructure a bond sometimes takes you a couple years sure. to be able to do depending on you know so on your loan. Let me clear. So, are we? Is this actually going to increase our customers' taxes or residents' taxes, or no? We just use it. Yes. This will actually. This will be a geo loan, and it, it, what's in the documents is, is the impact to you, your residents. So, can we? Is going to be what borrow, I say. Can, 40, can we borrow this money locally? It is. That's the plan. Is to borrow it locally. Could we borrow this money without a bond? No. And have the payments went up. And have the payments is constructed out of uh, our budget. That we, I mean, that's how we've done every fire truck since I've been on the fire department. Mm -hmm. We set up payment plans that come out of our general budget. Why can't we do that? For yeah, you are you are setting up payment plans that come out of your general budget, but that's going to pay the bond. That's how all of your that's, that's how your service. fire I, trucks what, have okay, been set so up. What I'm saying is, we're, we've already increased our taxes dramatically coming up. Year. And now we're trying to borrow money to increase it again. Or I think we could use our general fund to pay a loan of this amount from our increased tax income that we're getting in. We're getting in, and I don't have them budget numbers with me. I wish I'd have brought them um, already. We're getting 
almost three hundred thousand dollars a year more than we got last year. Two hundred ninety-seven sticks in my head that could be grown. Two ninety, two ninety-four. We're we're taking that much extra in for a gym. Isn't the majority of that money though we're trying to build up because we've got some big projects coming with the water tower and some of the other things? I mean, you know, we got to get. There isn't a lot of money in the in the in the coffers right now. That that, that that's part of the reason I thought we were trying to increase you can, some money. So if you want to, basically this is this is going to go into your debt service line. If you choose to pay your loan, so when I do the budget, if you choose to pay your loan, like so, when what I will do is. Um, when I go to like the fire bus because it's actually going to be the general fund to a certain extent that's going to pay on that and the taxes that are received from or the, the payments that are received from the townships. So, so, so when I go and I, and I, and I tell, tell it what it's going to be, it's going to say, okay, I'm going to take this much out of debt service, which is adding to your tax base dollar amount. And then I'm going to take so much out of what this is to pay that bond payment. So what they've done, because it's required by law now, is they have to provide you what the tax implication is going to be on a 1.3 million. And that's just out of, if you were just to put it all into, um, debt service, and that was in here because I thought it was like 46 cents per thousand. So what we've done in the past, I'll use the fire bus for example, on fire trucks is, it's all come out of the fire department's budget, and it gets dispersed against what's our budget, and our trustees, townships, it gets divided out yearly, and paid back locally at one of the two banks where we have the trucks borrowed from. I guess I thought that's what we decided to do on this fire equipment bus when we gave the go ahead to buy it. That was my understanding that it, it was never right. bonded before. It was never just bonded. on a regular loan. It was a regular it, you, loan. You can't, it, it's, it was still a bond. It's it's considered a bond. It, whether However you pay for it, it's still a bond. So yeah. even though that's what I that's what I mean by, the, because they're, the fire department's budget is going to pay the bond, so you still have to go get the loan. The loan's a bond, and you're paying on it. So just because, you know, it says, the estimated annual increase in property taxes on a residential property, it says will be forty one forty nine. But pay, that doesn't necessarily mean that that is going to be 24. the case. Depends on where you're going to pull those monies from to pay for the loan. Does that make sense? So if I'm going to pay the general fund for the equipment bus, then I, out of the fire budget then that will go into paying for part of, so the impact on the resident isn't gonna be as much as what this is indicated to be. I know that's how we've always, we've always done it the other way on fire trucks for 24 years. At least the ones that I've been involved with. The budget is not funded by borrowing money for a specific fire truck added to the taxpayers. It's always come out of the general fund to the fire department's budget, and then out of that budget, we make the payment for that truck. Well, we have a loan. There's a, I've got, a I've right got, bond, I've got bond documents that we pay a loan interest and principal to the bank on a fire truck, and I've got it upstairs. Right, but it's not a, it may be I'm confused, which could easily be, because we've never had to go to the public hearing to raise property taxes to pay for that fire truck. Well, I, I guess I don't know how Scott has done it in the past, but I know for me to go borrow money from the bank, even if I go to the local bank, I have to follow these procedures on to get a general obligation note from the bank. Even though we're going to keep it local and try and diverse it out between all of our banks here in town, I have to go through this process according to bonding council and everything else that we have to have the authority to hold a public hearing to make sure that we can do this. So if I'm reading this correctly, one hundred thousand. So if I have a two hundred thousand dollar house, my property tax is going to go up eighty three dollars. Okay, 
company that's gone. Potentially, depending on how some of this is going to be TIF, because this is TIF dollars, so some of that's going to get repaid by the TIF. Some of it is going to get paid by the, the fire budget. This is just putting it all together and going out by, we have to put it, what's the impact? Because the new regulations with the legislature, we have to put, what is the potential impact? The worst, worst case scenario. With yes. With if we, on the city has to pay it, we're right. yes. it all back on a call, on a call home. It's going to cost that much for $100,000 to do it. But that's not, it's, it's very rare that that's going to happen because of TIF and because of the budget. When we budget next year, we had an extra money for the budget. Right. It's, I mean, I guess I thought that's where we were at for this. I thought we were adding in extra money in our budget for the street sweeper to pay back, taking it out of our general fund to make them payments for that stuff. I mean, I'm going back to when we decided to buy the street sweeper. And well, because they said, well, you can lease it. I said it wouldn't make any difference to lease it or what's paid for it. We borrow the money at the same rate, and we try to get a little bit better rate, and we just make the payments back. I, I remember that, but I, I don't have that paperwork with me. I wish I did um, that stuff. Um, our debt that we well, I mean, that was basically we did a reimbursement resolution that we would go out and get a loan, um, and that's that was before, in a sense, before I got here when that was agreed to be purchased, was that we would go get a loan to pay it back. Um, but you can use your general fund money to pay the loan and not have it as impactful, you know, on it. And that would be decided when we get to the budget of, you know, do you want to pay it just out of the general fund or do you want to put it into, um, uh, you know, into your debt service line? Um, when you in, use your... Your debt service line is we have we have lots of room in our debt service to be able to put it. If we were just trying to budget this out of the general funds and the general fund taxes, we don't have enough in yeah, there's not enough money there to, to do that. But you can as you're paying it back over time, you can use some of those other funds and dollars to make it less impactful. I mean this would be the maximum impact. Obviously it doesn't have to be, you know, it was my, that was my understanding. So right. we were going to try to borrow the, whatever the amount was, and that's the same million dollars for compensation, and then we would set up a loan at the bank and pay it out of our general fund over time, and we could move money around. To do that. that was my understanding. Yeah, and it, it comes down to Not what? Increasing taxes to pay down. Yeah. And I think the, um, yeah, the increased taxes is the worst case if we don't have that money, then we can bounce things around and spend money. You know, I mean, I'll get a performer on what, you know, because he can lay out lots of different things if we want to pay the street sweeper back earlier, if you want to use some road use tax money, you know, to pay some of it back instead of using it and putting it into debt service. It basically goes into debt service, but how I set it up in the budget for repayment is how it gets impacted on any additional dollars and cents into the, into the taxes. Does that make sense? Right. So, so bottom line is this this forty one forty nine for a hundred thousand is a worst case scenario. Yes, we are going to be close to that because of our property budget we have. Right, and that money back, and it has to be advertised. This yes, way, according to law. Yes, yes, we've got to let the public the know that what we're scenario. doing. Right. Yep. And yeah, this is worst. This is worst case scenario on what the impact. If we were to put the entire amount into debt service, that's what the impact would be um, per thousand. What is that? I don't know. And we probably never ever had to go that route. Right. Fast. And your debt service line is extremely low right now. So you know, How you don't have. Pitfalls there. How's that? I think What's right now he had structured. He, when I talked to him the other day, he was. Structuring the plan, I think, on a 15 year, you know, and you can, so you, if you want to lessen the impact, you can go out 20 years. I mean, it's just, I, you know, we just kind of met in the middle because I, he had to put something in the documentation. So, yeah, I mean, you can make it a longer note and pay it off over longer time. What would the council like to do on this resolution? I guess I'd like. I just would like to see
this isn't this isn't agreeing to the note. This is just setting the public hearing date. Okay. This isn't making any final decisions whatsoever. It's just all you guys are really doing is setting a public hearing date and you know. I'm fine with the public hearing date. I just don't find it horrible. You motion to accept the resolution setting the public hearing date. I'll make the motion. Second. Roll call. Jensen? Yes. Walton? Yes. Beckman? Yes. Frank? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Okay. The water ordinance. Discussion on fire and grass. Okay, so you guys also got, along with the what I put in your packets, you guys also got another copy of 532 and 533 of what it would look, look like if um, we did 2,000 gallons and what that rate would be. Um, so I, I did talk to Teresa Sector about this a little bit because we had a discussion a couple of meetings ago that she did change the uh, late fees from we had late fees of five dollars. She's got it in there now, twenty-five dollars, and a reconnect fee was twenty. She's got it in there fifty. I don't know. Did you change the <coughs> tap fee? It's still at three hundred. What's that? It's still at three hundred. Didn't we talk? It's more cost us more than three hundred just the materials. Yeah, Sac City charges about seven hundred to do it. So if we're going, I, I would like this. If, we, if we're going to change this, I think we need to get more in line with our actual cost. Does that make sense? Yep. I don't see that part in here. But it, it would be so. This would be in what was the first one? The in your packet. Um, yeah, I don't see the the, the three ordinance five thirty one. And then there was another, there was an addendum yep. that shows you kind of like chapter 90. If you go to page 33, tapping fees, $300 for water taps, <coughs> one inch or smaller. So is there times that we'd have to tap larger than one inch for a bigger service line or something? I'm sure. I mean, if we have a business coming in and they want a two inch, so hypothetically, like the locker, they might need more water. So, mm -hmm. that, so do we need to change that tapping fee for two inch then or add something in there? I, I, only, I only want to do this once, I guess. B, B is for larger, it's for larger than one inch lines. So yeah, we're bumping so it, we need to bump both of them, both A and B on the two. So if you're going to change A to something different, then you would change B to that something different or a B equal to the time. So the materials it, used for water my, taps larger than one inch. My question is, does it cost us more from a one inch to go to a two inch? The parts are. That's, that was my question. Yeah, so so should that be no. different? That's what I'm trying to get at. Well, and, and B says that. That your oh. materials are larger than. Okay, I see. Absolutely. So you just, that. you just have to determine what you want that $300 to yeah. change to. Would you say Sac City was what, 750? 750 is what I've been told. I I think if we're... What do you think our actual cost is for the materials? If we got to do the saddle time, saddle time, curb stop, we're probably into it for close to 556. That's not including the equipment being out there. You throw the equipment on there. If we got the mini out or the backhoe out and the back and stuff like that, 700 is probably average. So why would we even? Why would we just keep it one price? What they tap, they tap. You know, I mean, you know, the, so a little right. more for the bigger than one, a little less for the one, and make it just a, the same number. Same number. I mean, just. Well, so well, or, you could, or you can leave it like it's written, change the page of whatever dollar figure it be, it's going to be either that dollar figure or more. Well, yeah. the cost be well, the thing, if we tap a two inch, we got to put a valve on it, not a curb stop like what you have in front of your house. The valve is probably 600 bucks by itself. So that's 
having B in there, the whatever number you decide you want in there, the we'll just say seven hundred dollars or the fee equal to the time of the city and the materials, then we can charge for the valve itself instead of a two hundred dollar curb stop. We're looking at a five hundred dollar two inch valve. Right. Okay. So B, the actual dollar number doesn't really matter because we're exceeding that. It, it would probably be the five or seven hundred dollars if that's what you come up with, plus whatever the difference is. So if a regular curb stop cost me a buck seventy five, and the other valve's five hundred, we just take the buck seventy five off the five hundred, and they have to pay that additional difference. If I'm looking at this correctly, this ordinance hasn't changed since July of two. Mm -hmm. Probably not. Mm -hmm. So in twenty two years we're yeah. Which is which is why I mean some of it in 531 I've actually the highlights didn't come through on what I was kind of requesting. Um, there was one piece out of uh, section one that um, I had basically eliminated out, and I brought my. Um, why do you want to hand me your organs? I had mine down here and then we had a question and I took my notes too. Go to Ray, go to the best man. Can show me that? So we need to find one back. So in the first section there, I basically eliminated that a variance. The City Council, upon recommendation of the Superintendent, may consider a variance or exception to this section on application to the City. Um, it basically was taking out, uh, like, you know, because it says mandatory connection to the public water system and use of private wells. I couldn't find anybody that was offering a variance out to the general public on doing something different instead of connecting to the water system. So I felt that we just we just eliminated that piece out. Um, and then uh, 90.07 of the Code of Ordinances, um, basically that plumber required um, all installations of water surface pipes and connections to the water system outside of city personnel shall be made by a state licensed plumber or approved by the superintendent. So it changes the language a little bit. Um, I, I kind of shorten it up from what we had um, previously. Um, and I think you guys do have that. Oh, no, you don't. You got that page. Um, so basically, previously it said, plumber required all installations of water service pipes and connections to the water system shall be made by a plumber approved by the city. The superintendent shall have the power to suspend the approval of any plumber for a violation of any of the provisions of this chapter. A suspension, unless revoked, shall continue until the next regular meeting of the city council. The superintendent shall notify the plumber immediately by personal written notice of the suspension, the reasons for the suspension, and the time and place of the council meeting at which the plumber will be granted a hearing. At this council meeting, the superintendent shall make a written report to the council stating the reasons for the suspension, and the council, after fair hearing, shall affirm or revoke the suspension or take further action that is necessary and proper. I don't, I didn't see anybody else's code that kind of concluded all of that word. So I kind of shortened it up because more than likely, you know, they're either going to do it correctly or not do it correctly. Um, and then uh, probably the biggest one here is responsibility for the water service pipe. Um, all costs and expenses incident to the installation, connection, and maintenance of the water service pipe for the main to the building served shall be formed by the owner with the exception of the corporation stock corporation box and the water meter which are provided at the city's expense, the owner shall indemnify the city from any loss or damage that may directly or indirectly be occasioned by the installation or maintenance of said water service pipe. So basically right now, our ordinance says that we have from the main to the curb stop, and then from the curb stop is the owner's responsibility. What I'm, and along with Jason, our recommendation is now the owner, the homeowner, or resident, or commercial owner um, owns the entire service line except the curb stop. There's a lot of communities that include that curb stop that they own and 
service that curb stop themselves, but I'm making an exception to the curb stop, and so they own from the main to the building, and any repairs thereof, but then if there's a repair or a leak right in the curb stop, then, you know, that's our responsibility. And I just ran into this with my father last week. He, his service line was leaking in, like, the city of Storm Lake. They want to charge you to come out and shut off the curb stop so they can fix your service line. Because of what I do for a living, I was allowed to do it. Um, and didn't have to pay a $75 fee for them to come turn the valve so we could replace my father's cur our service line. But if we had to go past the curb stop and we had to touch that main at all, the city has to do that aspect of it. Everything else my father owns from the house to the main and thank goodness we didn't have to go past the curb stop. But uh, it, we have so many individuals, um, whether licensed or unlicensed plumbers or people that make their own wrenches, uh, that are turning our curb stops and breaking them, and then we have to go dig it, and we have to replace it. Um, and it, it gets expensive for us. With us changing that, <clears throat> we are actually putting the burden on the homeowners for the city's line that they owned previously. Because the city did it to the curb stop before. Right. Um, right. Which in our in our ordinance in our ordinance. <laughs> In, the, in, the, in our ordinance now, we have to, we're going to have to change it because it says the city will bring water to your property line. You have to go to the sewer main. So I'll use Crescent Park Drive, for example. The water is on the west side of the road. When they develop on the east side of the road now, they have to, we're telling our homeowners, they have to go underneath the road and look up water. Which is just a vice versa for the sewer that's on the other side. My worry with this is the homeowners aren't going to be warned they're going to be cutting up more roads to cut the water. Is that going to create an issue with their streets? But if you read the sewer ordinance, if, if, it, if it was flip flop and the sewer's over here and the water's over here. The, our ordinance states that they have to connect the sewer to our main, so they're going to cut our road anyways. Correct. But I'm just trying to think through this, that we don't create more... Um, Patchwork? Correct. <laughs> yes. I think that's where it comes into play with the contractors that... Because sewer you can't bore as easy as you can bore water. Correct. Correct. I think that comes into play with the contractors that we have in town. It, most of our contractors in the time frame that I have been here, if they're going to cut my road, they call and tell me they're going to cut my road. And then they fix it. And then they fix it. And the contractors that we have had, I can't speak for all of them, have done a very good job of the patchwork. It's not, um, I don't want to say it's haphazard. Uh, that's, I guess that's where it falls under responsibility of me to make sure that if they're going to do cut my road, they're going to fix my road properly and not just yeah, throw yeah. some crap in there. So my point <laughs> is, how do we get that in this ordinance written properly? Because again, it's a lot easier to bore the road hook up a water line than cutting the road and digging it down. And I know they have to do it for sewer because they got to make sure they have the right fall. But right. on water, they don't need that. I, I think that's something that's yeah. going to be. I, I can say that I'm, you know, in all of the research that I've done in trying to look up, you know, different wordings of stuff. I mean, I guess it doesn't necessarily play into exact wording in the ordinance that that they have to. I mean, I guess you could put it in there, um, but I haven't seen it. Um, I don't know that we've had an issue with contractors not, you know, putting, you know, and taking care of the road. Um, in my experience, um, 
but I mean, we can add that wording into the ordinance that any any damage or you know road repair will you know would be required if you want to go that route. It, 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 and the reason I'm saying it is because we're and I don't know how often an existing water line goes bad. Have we had any existing water lines in town go bad in the time frame I've been here? Yes, last week. Damn. <laughs> It, so now, but that's it, it's after the curb stop, but it is right. It, it, it's property owners, correct? But I mean, it's an existing water line. That's so, like, I, I'll use that as an example. So, if it would be before the curb stop, today it's the city's responsibility. But when we change this, it's going to be the homeowner's responsibility. How far is that water line that feeds our house? Where's it come? How far is it? <laughs> hers is an, we got to talk about that too. Hers is an odd one. Uh, hers. Actually, um, I believe it's Mrs. Kraft's house. Yeah, jumps the, the alley and goes, it's off the corner of Linda Kraft's house. Okay, so most of the time it's not that. No. The majority of ours are not that way. Okay, so like if we're going to feed the car wash extension down there with a long service line, now they're going to be responsible for that service line for the future. Correct. Is my understanding that correctly? Correct. Because it must be how it happened because now they're advertising insurance for any kind of digging on their water and sewer main and all that. So I mean, that's... Well, and that's something I learned with my father uh, with what we just had done at his house. His homeowner's insurance covers his service line up to ten thousand. Right. Um, he granted he still has to pay his five hundred dollar deductible, but most of the insurance companies are offering that service line, whether it's water or sewer. Which well, is and, and, in. I wish we knew how many service lines were a long run to the curb stop because <coughs> I really don't want to put a big burden on our homeowner. That because I know we're going to have some odd ones in this town. 100% like right. any other town. The, the, biggest, the, the biggest thing I guess that I'm going with this is I'm, I'm, I don't want to say I'm trying to burden our homeowners more, but... You're trying to be more consistent. Well, more consistent and plus, you know, we've... we've I, I put it back in the curb stops. I, there's a lot of communities that they don't... The, the cities don't even own the curb stops. They... And you know, and I just I go back to Holstein. I was like, we actually our ordinance said that the homeowner responsible for the curb stop, and we sent letters and we sent them nuisance, you know, abatement letters that they had so long to get their curb stop fixed because they did not work. Um, you know, curb stops were they can you, we can you know they're spending eight you know eight thousand dollars to have a curb stop repaired. Now I know that if we as city you know the city replaces the curb stop, you know, you're talking time replacement of the curb stop, depending on what's going and I don't know, how many have we replaced in the last year? We the replaced time frame I've been here, I've replaced four. Four curb stops. And we probably have several more that aren't, you know, <laughs> that we know that aren't working. We'll in a sense. Several. Or buried. Um, that we don't even, yeah. you know, yeah, We're still find. trying to find some. <laughs> but at I'm the just... end of the day, is like, you know, if we have to dig up a service line, I mean, that, that stuff gets expensive and our water system is just, it's struggling. Yeah, I just, this, this, the way you have this written would be absolutely perfect in a new development area, but I'm not sure if it's, and it could be, I mean, you're right. right, could be the right thing for the rest of the town. I just don't know how many That's service lines we've got, but like, this is where Zach was, you know, that was a, a joint, that's the sewer, sewer though. I know. Yes. His water is in the front of his house, right, right next to the tree, and the sidewalk. So, and I don't. I, I guess I'd have to ask Bill. But that Crescent Park Drive, when he brought that across, he brought it across for two lots at one time, put two curb stops in. So is there one line feeding them two curb stops? It, I don't know. It's a. It should be. He should have the not knowing, I would assume, if he ran probably a one-inch line, I would assume he puts a curb stop here, or he tees off of it, puts a curb stop, so it's almost a water main, 
and not necessarily a service line because where he tees off to go to the curb stop and then to the house and then he has another tee that goes to the curb stop. So, so I, and I don't, I guess I'd have to ask how he did it, but they board underneath the road once, mm -hmm. and he's got two curb stops, one feet in this house, one feet in that house. Is that service line service feeding service. both curb stops to feed both them houses, Probably. or did he bring two lines over? So now we have a joint service line. Mm -hmm. Which you really shouldn't have. Which, and I don't know if he did that, or he might have brought two, but, but he might have brought two lines be, over. I don't know. So here, here's here's the thing. You you know you're looking at your verbiage that you have in there mm -hmm. and how are we going to change that verbiage to every incident that we have? I mean, well, is there something so, hard in there about yeah. hardship or something? Well, but what am I Well, my point, I guess my point is, and I don't know if he did it this way, but if he's got one line coming over, then to the two curb stops, and that service line goes bad, which one of the two homeowners has to pay for that? Split it. That's what people do on the sewer lines and other joints. I guess you could do that. Yep. That's what I was going to say. Your cost, you can grandfather it in. And if you determine oh, it's this length that, that qualifies grandfather in, then you split it with the city. If it's you know, if it's a shorter one, then there's no issues with it. If there's a long line that you yeah. well, on both, that you can just kind of work around it, but have it in the language somehow. I right, right. You know, I I don't know how you're going to move the language to encompass every situation. Yeah, well, that's just except it. for leaving it, leaving it pretty much in a sense that that if it's from the main to the curb stop, it's our responsibility, and from the curb stop to the building, it's the owner's responsibility. You can certainly leave it that way too. I mean, it just so you just can't keep afford to do all this stuff all the time. Uh -huh. No, well, and that's and that's where you know that's you know there's a value to that when the, even when the city does the work and we repair it we fix it we replace it there's a value to that and it's that value is becoming a lot more expensive. Well, I think I I think would seven hundred bucks be a comfortable number? I think it's way better than three hundred. <laughs> to help cover. I think it's gonna help us with our cost. Well, and that's on new installations. Years. That's yeah, yeah, twenty-two yeah. years long. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it's, a, it's a place to start with that. Yeah. 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 Well, no, this, 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 this is a this is reading. This this is this yeah, well, you'll you'll get to the readings, but I just that's why I wanted to put this in front of you to see if this is where you wanted to go. If there was any other additional changes, so that the next time. It pretty much is set Good start. in stone. So, but going back to the 531, do you guys want me to kind of, you want to revisit Chapter 90, which is the service? Um, I'll, I'll add the 700, I'll change the $700, but so for the responsibility of the water service pipe, do you want me to just take that out for now and you guys can change that or not change it at a later date? To do it, to do it all. Yeah, if we take it out and don't have it in there, we might never have it in there again. Or have a chance of us going back. It's been 20 odd years since we've looked at it this time. We probably want to make sure that, it, that there's something in there to protect us. Cost just to go up. Cost just to go up. Yeah. You can debate this all you want. Well, it's to it's, me, it's, it's good, one after the other. It, yeah, it's going to cost money, no matter what. Yeah. It's, it's an unfortunate situation, no matter who it is, when it happens. Yep. Um, okay. Well, I mean, it, it's something that can be, you know, I guess I can look at and see if there's, you know, wording for, you know, grand, being grandfathered or, you know, those kinds of things, but minimum, it's like... Like a minimum, see, they don't handle this one, this many. Right, you know, or, health, you know, it can be, you know, things can be considered yeah. or something, you know, at the end of the day. I mean, I can revisit some of that. In, in but, unfortunate situations, please visit with the city to see what remedies can be. Yeah. 
Because I'm going to get a huge water bill. Okay. Just wait Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Yes. Yeah. 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 Then we'll go on to the sewer ordinance discussion. Well, um, you're, you're still going to say this. Okay. We're still going to talk about So do you want to go, the water. yeah, do you want to keep it at the 1,000 or do you want to go to the 2,000? 2,000 gallon minimum. So I remember on water last rates. meeting I talked about the 2,000 gallon minimum. Yeah, I can just add the extra 1,000 into the 2,000 yeah. minimum. I mean, it, it, so Teresa put the two in front of us so we can see the two differences. Yeah. And, and now, when we do that on the water, we almost have to follow suit on the suit. Yes. Right, and I did you that. On the, yeah. So then it would be the, like on the water, it would be the 1646, which is the amount that was on the 5%, and then we added the the 2,000 gallons. So the minimum would be the, the 2,000 gallon, and then anything over 2,000 is that 470 per yeah. 1,000 gallons. So, we can set the system up so that then it only goes in increments of a thousand versus, you know, two thousand, four thousand. You know, right. um, I did add um, because we've been changing out a whole gob of meters. I put in a meter charge. Um, that's something that's new um, because we're about what are we at? Close to two seventy five for a new meter to replace a meter. Close to that, I think. Yeah, certainly not less than that. And we just. That's why you charge for a second meter, isn't it? 275? That's 350, I Well, it depends on the. That's whether you're talking the meter or the meter with the. Um, Spuds. Or the readout. No, the. Oh, we have a we have spud charge, the meter charge, and then the ERT charge. And so it depends on what, what you all need. I think it was 350 when I did my second meter. But that's what Yeah. Because you're getting the whole. Right. Yeah. Package. Yeah. Yep. And then the bulk water, um, the water dispenser at the fire station, um, that was changed. If you don't want, you know, that was changed to go to, I think it's five dollars now. Was that right? Yeah. To seven. Yeah. And then the late payment fee to twenty-five dollars. Instead of five. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> I think that's what it was, yeah. Yeah, that's what it was. Fine. Yep. And reconnect fee was 20, she changed it to fee. And then your your sewer, same thing. If this would be the 2,000 gallons um, minimum to coincide with the 2,000 on the water side, and then anything over 1,000 gallons after that. And that was only a 3%. Not a yes, and that was a three percent out of five. I think I have everything. As long as you, if you guys want to go with the two thousand, that's what I'll put together for the next meeting. Okay. Yep. Anybody have anything else? Motion to adjourn. So over. Second. Second. Meet the job. Thank you.